Chandani from Max Planck Institute from Germany. Hello everyone, I'm Hina and I'll talk about the investigation of hydrogen embrittlement in a high manganese filling in loose plasticity of steel. I'm a PhD student at Max Planck Institute for Iron Research in Germany under the Department of Microstructure Physics and Alloy Design in the supervision of Professor Betty Scott in Atom Probe Tomography Group. So twinning induced plasticity steels are austenitic with face center cubic crystal structure. They have high manganese content above 28%. And they have extraordinary mechanical properties with very high tensile strength and ductility. Uh, the reason for this is the formation of mechanical twins during deformation, which act as obstacles in the path of dislocation, which leads to very high strain hardening in trip steels. However, trip steels are prone to hydrogen embrittlement, and several mechanisms have been proposed in the literature, but the actual mechanism is not yet well understood. So here is the experimental procedure that we followed to study the hydrogen embrittlement in the studied twip steel. We performed the cathodic hydrogen charging and then we performed the tensile deformation. We studied the evolved microstructure using scanning electron microscopy techniques and then we studied the interaction of hydrogen with structural defects by atom probe tomography. So here is the cathodic hydrogen charging setup that we used. We used the aqueous solution of 0 0.05 molar sulfuric acid. And by the application of the voltage, the water dissociates into H ions, which move towards cathode, where the sample is attached. While oxygen is liberated at anode, which is used as the platinum wire in the current study. So as we already saw the stress strain curve of the uncharged sample, and after five days of hydrogen charging, there was a drastic reduction in ductility from 75% to around 10% after charging. And then we observed the fracture surface of, in the fracture surface of uncharged sample was composed of ductile features, while for the, uh, for the charged sample, it has three different regions. The region close to the surface had intergranular, I hope it's visible in this case, yeah. So the region close to the surface had intergranular fracture. And beyond this, for about 60 micron depth, there was a brittle region, while the center still had ductile features. This is because of the slow diffusivity of hydrogen in austenite. And that's, this also shows that the, even after five days of hydrogen charging, the sample was not homogeneously charged there was the hydrogen concentration degradation and it did not reach the center of the sample. So we also observed one interesting thing here that was the increase in yield strength after hydrogen charging by 50 megapascal. So in order to study what is happening in this region, we chose three different tensile strain levels. So we took the tensile samples, we charged them, then we deformed one by 3%, second one by 5%, third one by 7%, and then we cut the vertical cross section. And in this cross section, we distinguish these two regions, like the region close to the surface edges was considered to be the hydrogen charge region, while the center did not have any hydrogen, so it indicated the microstructure of the uncharged region. And these microstructures were studied by electron channeling contrast imaging techniques. I would briefly introduce this technique. It's performed in a scanning electron microscope using a backscattered electron detector on, and the sample is placed on a six axis stage. What usually happens is that the primary electron beam is incident onto the sample in such a way that it is coherent with the lattice. And since these electrons are coherent, can, they, are, they cannot be coherent with all the grains at the same time. The grains with which they are coherent, these electrons channel through giving a signal of dark intensity like giving weaker signal, while as soon as they encounter any defect in the lattice, they are backscattered, giving a signal of higher intensity. And that's how it, is, it enables us to observe the dislocation and the defect structures in the specimen. So this is how the dislocations look like and about the other structural defects, for instance, the stacking faults look like this in ACCI. And the stacked layers of stacking falls usually form the Epsilon Martin site. And this is how they are visible in ECCI. 
So this microstructure evolution was studied from this sample surface and after 3% of tensile deformation from the uncharged region, we observed the planar dislocations. While in the charged region, we observed the formation of dislocation cells. This is because the hydrogen increases the dislocation density that lead to the cell formation. With an increase in the tensile deformation, again in the uncharged region, there were planar dislocations, while in the charged region, there were dislocation partials and there were loop dipoles. With further increase in tensile deformation, this was converted to the formation of stacking falls. So in this case, like in the uncharged region, we do not have any change in the structure of dislocations, but this dis dislocation structure evolves from the formation of deform dislocation cells to the stacking falls. So what happens that when, the, when we increase the strain, then hydrogen redistributes and it creates the region of lower hydrogen, like locally the regions of lower hydrogen concentration and higher hydrogen concentration are created. And hydrogen also reduces the stacking fault energy. So the regions where we have the higher hydrogen content, the stacking fault energy is reduced, which forms the dislocation partials while the region which is devoid of hydrogen forms the loop dipoles, which is still indicative of the cross slip. And then this is further forms the st complete stacking falls because of the lowering of stacking fault energy due to hydrogen. And then we analyze the interaction of these dislocation, these structural defects by atom probe tomography. But in this study, we focused on the twin boundaries because twin boundaries play a very important role in the mechanical properties of FIP steels and that's why it was important to understand the interaction of hydrogen with twin boundaries especially. So I would briefly introduce the atom probe tomography technique. We make a specimen in the form of a needle having the radius below 100 nanometer and it is cryogenically cooled, like it is kept at cryogenic temperature and then we apply a DC voltage on the application of voltage, the atoms at the surface of the specimen ionize, and then they move towards the counter electrode and detected by the position sensitive detector. In order to call the, cause the field evaporation, either we apply the high voltage pulsing or laser pulsing. And with this, we can measure the time of flight of, the of these atoms from the surface of the specimen to the detector which is used to, like which, which is reconstructed and used to, for the elemental mapping of this in the three dimension. So this can give us the three dimension special distribution of atoms in the specimen. And so we first examine the incoherent sigma three twin boundary in from the uncharged sample, which was not charged. And in this we observed, like this is the atom probe crystallography which, with which we can map the 002 poles from both of the grains and the inversion of this pole confirms the presence of the sigma three twin boundary in between. And at this boundary we, did, we observed the 3.3 atom percent of carbon segregation and there was no oxygen or manganese enrichment at this boundary. But at the coherent sigma three twin boundary, there was no elemental segregation. And hence we located the boundary by the local fluctuation in the iron density map. At this boundary, there was the manganese depletion. And there was also oxygen enrichment. We also found that the oxygen was present in the residual material, in the, in the material which was used for the analysis. But this oxygen was segregated at the coherent sigma three twin boundary and they were more prone to oxidation, more likely because of the manganese depletion. Then we sent some samples for tritium charging to our collaborators at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and we analyzed a coherent sigma three twin boundary which is found to be segregated with tritium and oxygen. And this manganese depletion at the boundary again drives the, both the segregation of oxygen and tritium at the boundary. This also shows the combined role of hydrogen and oxygen in the embrittlement of FIP steels. So to summarize, FIP steels are promising structural materials with high strain hardening, but they're highly susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement. We analyzed the microstructure evolution due to hydrogen with an increase in the tensile strain from 3% to 7%, where we observed a transition from the dislocation cell formation to the stacking falls with an increase in tensile strain. 
and we also observed the tritium and oxygen segregation at a coherent twin boundary. And this also suggests that although the twin boundaries play a very significant role in the mechanical properties of swift steels, but they are also susceptible to oxidation and hydrogen enrichment. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and I'd be happy to take any questions.